Walter Coatherd farms hill land to the west of Selkirk, 1,000 acres of rough heather grazing, fit only for sheep or hill cattle. There's a tradition of horsemanship on the borders, and the horse is as much part of Walter's daily routine as the tractor. Like father, like son. At 11, Stuart Coltherd is an experienced rider. When he's not at school, he and his pony Gypsy help with the shepherding. Over this last month, he's been putting in as big a mileage as he can. Tomorrow, the Selkirk Common Riding will take him 13 miles across river, moor and hill. The test of a border horseman. The border landscape is dotted with small towns, Hoyk, Gala, Kelso, Langham, Selkirk. All are fiercely independent and each has its own festival, its assertion of identity. Selkirk's common riding dates back over 450 years and in the market square of the old borough town, the rostrum is set, the bunting flying. Tonight all roads will be closed and the town given over to the centuries old tradition of the flag and the horse. The Burley Man, Selkirk's town crier for the festival. The town is straining at the seams with visitors and returning exiles. There's not a bed or a horse to be had for five miles round. And by tomorrow, Selkirk's five and a half thousand population will have doubled. No day, the provost, magistrates and councillors of the Royal Borough of Selkirk, having fixed tomorrow, Friday, the 17th day of June 1977, for the riding of the marches of the town's lands. The Selkirk Common Riding Trust, as successors to the said provost, magistrates and councillors, hereby summon the neighbouring heritors and all others to attend for their interests. The following have been appointed as parliament to go round the marches of the said royal borough's property and lands. Back in the 16th century, this would be the signal for a general arming for a show of strength on the borough boundaries. In an era without maps, a show of force dictated the extent of your marches. The following are standard bearers. Ian Hope, 19 Thornfield Avenue. Hooray! There will be all these, and a great many more, and all to make ready to start at the sound of the second drum. The standard bearers have a final rehearsal. Tomorrow, each will stand alone on the rostrum in the square under the critical eye of his neighbors. It's elbow grease and spit and polish for Gypsy's final grooming, a scene being repeated all round Selkirk. There'll be no time in the morning. Horsemen are called for 6.30, the foot procession at 4. Three bands parade round the town, each gathering its procession of supporters and freelance drum majors. It takes dedication to be awake at such an hour, but many have been up all night celebrating the gathering of friends and exiles for the common riding. Like so many places in Scotland, Selkirk exports people, and suitors from all over the world make the trip back home for this week in June.
Riders canter to their assembly point while the foot processions wend their own route, singing songs which were committed to manuscript in the 1890s, but which are far older. As Stuart prepares to mount up, he becomes one more of the 450 riders and 4,000 marchers who are converging on the Victoria Hall for the busing of the colours. The borough standard, the flag of the Royal Borough of Selkirk, is garlanded with blue ribbons and handed over to Ian Hope, the borough standard bearer. Standard bearer, Provost Robert. I now declare that the standard of the Royal and Ancient Borough of Selkirk has been well and truly bust for the year 1977. Standard bearer Hope, I wish you every success in the discharge of your duties and a very happy common riding. Watching the ceremony, a figure in bronze accoutred in the armour and side arms of the 16th century. He too bears a standard. His name is Fletcher. We'll come to his part in the common riding ritual later. Cast it on your return to the marketplace. Return it to me in the name of the people of the Royal Borough, unsullied and untarnished. Safe out, safe in. Another celebrity associated with Selkirk, Sir Walter Scott, keeps a stony eye on things as the procession streams away towards the River Ettrick and the borough boundary. Banners representing the ancient crafts of Selkirk, the hammermen, the weavers, the merchant company, the colonials and the ex-servicemen form focal points in the procession, their supporters wearing rosettes, blue for the borough, yellow for the exiles. For Ian Hope, this is the beginning of a four-hour ordeal. He has to lead the cavalcade over 13 miles of rough terrain and return the borough banner to the town. Safe out, safe in. The River Ettrick is high today, swollen by rain earlier in the week. Those who are uncertain of the ford cross by the bridge. Among the riders, there's a wide difference in ability. Some who have been in the town all week are perhaps suffering from an excess of suitor hospitality. Many have hired a hack for the day. Thirteen miles and a river to ford. There are a few thoughtful faces on the way down the green. Loss of face or loss of seat. For Stuart and many others, the moment of decision as the cavalcade pauses.
bridge group has separated off while the main cavalcade makes for the river bank. With the standard safe in and safe out, the others make their way across. It's a thought to plunge into a swollen river on a hired horse, especially if you've spent the previous two days celebrating in anticipation. At least all the horses are sober. It's not an easy crossing, but it's well marshalled. You must make it on your own. That's a matter of border pride. One or two youngsters of Stuart's age make the crossing unobtrusively shepherded by a father or a brother. Not so easy to keep dry shod on the back of a pony. As the tailenders splash their way out of the ford, the main procession is streaming away over the moor. There's no suggestion of a race, though some like to stay close to the standard bearer. It all depends on your horse. Some are beginning to feel that 13 miles across country is a wee bit much. Ahead of the pack, Ian Hope and his attendants approach the three brethren summit, the outer limit of the borough land. The standard is shared on the hill stretch between the attendants, leaving the standard there of fresh for the ride back into Selkirk. To be standard bearer, you must have ridden the marches three times and twice as an attendant. You must be a bachelor with considerable stamina. The pre-common riding dinners take a heavy toll and have, according to local legend, ruined many a good match. <laughs> A refreshment is called for, though perhaps not too ostentatiously. The Three Brethren is about seven miles out. At 1400 feet at this time on a June morning, the wind is keen enough to keep folk on the move. Walk under its legs, one of them, the standard bearer should ideally be Selkirk born, but since the local maternity unit is situated outside the borough boundary at nearby Peel Hospital, 
this qualification is becoming more difficult to apply. Walter Coulthard solved that problem by rushing his wife into Selkirk as soon as labour started. Young Stewart is an undoubted suitor. As the crowd of riders gather at the summit, they reflect the social life of the borders in all its formality and informality. Four hundred years ago, the cavalcade would have been armed horsemen. Today, the common riding is a social occasion. The majority of the riders outsiders here for the fun. Though we mustn't underestimate the importance of the occasion to suitors. A year or so ago, two exiles returned too late to hire a horse. Fired with nostalgic resolve, they completed the course on a donkey. The Eildon Hills mark the nearby town of Melrose. Most of the border towns and villages are no more than a day's walk apart. Once the stragglers have reached the summit, the standard bearer leads off on the road back to Selkirk. By 11 o'clock, the townsfolk have gathered to see the standard bearer in. Despite the hazards of weather, fatigue and John Barleycorn, all but a handful of riders managed to complete the course. Riding the marches is not unique to Selkirk. Many towns and villages beat the boundary, though few can match Selkirk's cavalcade of horsemen. What makes this ceremony unique is the second strand in the tradition, that of the standard bearer. Sixty-five years ago, King James IV of Scotland led an army into England. On his way south, he summoned fighting men from his border boroughs. 
Selkirk sent over 80, virtually every able-bodied man. These standards borne towards the rostrum in the market square commemorate that ill-fated campaign. Behind these four craft standards comes the borough flag and cavalcade. As they converge on the rostrum, the British Legion standard marches ahead. The formal ritual of casting dates back into an untraceable antiquity. Four and a half centuries ago at Flodden Field, the Scottish and English armies met in a downpour. There followed the most complete defeat the Scottish army ever suffered. King James, the Bishop of St Andrews, two bishops, two abbots, thirteen earls and ten thousand men, the flower of Scotland's manhood, were cut down. Of the eighty men who left Selkirk, only one the Fletcher of the statue returned, bearing a captured English standard. When asked the course of the battle, he flourished the banner above his head, then let it fall without a word.
flag to be cast is fittingly that of the British Legion. The common riding is almost over for another year. The ceremony is drawing to a close. After the final banner, a silence is broken by the haunting notes of a lament. Set to words in the late 18th century by Jean Elliot, it tells of the emptiness and desolation experienced throughout Scotland after Flodden. For the order sent our lads to the border, the English for ance by guile won the day. The flowers of the forest that thought I the foremost, the prime of our land, are called in the clay. We'll hear Neymar lilting at our yow milking, women and bairns are heartless and way, sighing and moaning on ilka green loaming. The flowers of the forest are our weed away.